Good morning, Pastor Ken here, back in the backyard, and uh, this will be our concluding uh, study as we've looked at the studies in prayer, which, as we say, is really studies in uh, the Lord's Prayer, because that's what we're looking at. And, um, oh boy, yeah, I look this way every morning, and I guess we're all friends here, so we will love each other in the morning, so <laughs> that's good. This is the toughest part of the Lord's Prayer. You remember those verses at the beginning about uh, don't use meaningless repetition, don't be showy in your praying, praying um, don't pray like, like the Gentiles do, all of that. that that's not that hard. We, we don't want to be phonies, do we? Uh, we don't want to be showy or manipulative. and We, we want to pray the real deal. But this part's the tough part, and it's the concluding part of the Lord's Prayer. At least it's what Jesus said right after he taught on prayer. And I don't know why I haven't heard more people complaining or questioning or struggling with this, because I, I really struggled with it. It drove me to really a few years of study to understand this one thing, forgiveness, what it is. Now, in the Lord's Prayer, of course, we pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And, uh, and then we move on. We want to be forgiven and we want to forgive. But then Jesus uh, says the toughest thing. Didn't he do that a lot? It's all nicey-nice and, and then suddenly, bam! And uh, that's what he does with verse 14 of chapter 6 in the Gospel of Matthew. He says, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15, But if you do not forgive others, then your heavenly Father will not forgive your transgressions. That seems to fly against everything we understand about God and forgiveness. We preach the gospel. We talk about Jesus. We talk about our faith. And it's always nuanced and prefaced and saturated with the concept that you are forgiven by God. And he will always forgive you. You will not uh, stand to be punished for your sins by God. But here, Jesus is saying, uh, you know, you, for, uh, you forgive others, you'll be forgiven. You don't forgive them, you won't be forgiven. Wow. I think this idea might be... Ah, I probably should have drank a couple of these before making this video, but here I am. Uh, I, th I think this might cause a lot of trouble in our understanding of forgiveness because given this verse and given the horrible concept of not being forgiven by God for our transgressions, we got to do something with that. I think what we do with it is that we tend to water down forgiveness, uh, make it into something that is not really forgiveness. Uh, or we we try to put words in Jesus mouth that aren't there to we try to use this verse maybe to argue the idea that you, you you won't be saved if you don't forgive others and your sins won't be forgiven no sin in heaven therefore you're bringing your sin into heaven and that can't happen so you won't be forgiven I don't believe in those things first off uh, I I believe that we're saved um, not even primarily because our sins are forgiven. We're saved because we trust in Jesus. So no matter how right or wrong you get this whole Christianity thing in your life, it, it does not affect your salvation as long as the one thing is true, that you believe in Jesus for your salvation. It's that simple. But there's, of course, the life of living for Jesus and of, and of being a Christian and a follower of Jesus, and it involves forgiveness. I was driven to study this verse and to really look at it because um, it bothered me that there would be a, a condition or a commandment given in Scripture that according to my own ideas of forgiveness, I had no way of, of, of keeping. Um, if I believed that I could only forgive someone if they were sorry for their sins, that's not fair to say that I can't be forgiven. If they're not sorry for their sins, then I can't forgive them. That's not fair. It's not right. And it doesn't make sense. Why would God give a command that, to me that depends on somebody else for me to keep it? 
yeah. That didn't seem fair. And the other thing was that I couldn't, as I understood forgiveness, I couldn't make myself forgive people if it really meant being at a, a state of peace with them or reconciled with them um, or, or even at a state of peace with myself to where I felt good about forgiving them and I felt okay and I felt I'd forgiven. If I didn't feel those things in here, then I, it's, it's almost as if I would have to be a phony and act like I'd forgiven them or something when I really hadn't, but it didn't seem fair that God would require me to feel a certain way from somebody that had hurt me before he could forgive me. And that's because I was thinking of forgiveness in the wrong way. The Greek word that is written down in this text is aphemi. It, it means to lift off something. Like if I was, I don't know, lots of heavy stuff in my yard here around me, but if I was carrying it and, and you said, oh, Ken, let me get that, and you lifted it off of my shoulders, that would be lifting it away. That would be releasing it from me and, and removing that burden. It's also used to describe the, the uh, relieving of a debt, forgiving somebody's debt against you. So if somebody, if I owed you money and you uh, wrote me a note and said, Ken, I know you owe me this money and... I just want to let you know that uh, I've forgiven you that debt. Do not repay me that money. It is forgiven. I, I'm, I'm absorbing that myself. Uh, you're forgiven. You see, um, forgiveness, afemi, as it is in this verse, does not involve a lot of heavy emotional feeling, really. It doesn't even solve the problems and the, the feelings I might have about the person who sinned against me. It's just a matter of relieving a debt. Now, here's the debt. When someone sins against me, I carry toward them a sense of d deep, deep disappointment. I carry in myself a sense of hurt and trauma and offense. And the natural tendency that I have and that you might have is to attack them or to take vengeance on them, to go after them, to inflict upon them the same kind of hurt that I received from them. And, uh, of course, they might want to do the back the same to me, and we might end up in a feud. But uh, um, in, in, in my world, in my way of thinking, uh, I'm naturally led to carry something against someone when they have offended me. And I don't forgive them. I want justice, and I want to get it myself. I want to take justice, and usually, let's be honest, our justice ha is flavored, at least lightly salted, with vengeance. So how do I forgive somebody with that being true? Here's what I believe it means to forgive somebody. It means that I release them from my actions of vengeance. That's how I forgive them. It means that I release them from the hatred and anger that I feel toward them. It means I release them from any plotting or planning that I might do to exact vengeance and get my payback out of them. I let it go. It also means that I will release them from my hatred. I let it go. Um, it also means that I actually can bless them by wishing the best for them. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But it means that I will honestly before God pray for them and wish the best for them. And the best for them involves repentance. It involves justice. It involves if they've committed a crime, uh, I would have reported it to the police because that's what you do. But you, in reporting it to police, you're giving over justice to them. You're not taking it on yourself. It's not an act of vengeance to report a crime. It's, a, it's an act of obedient citizenship as a citizen here. So what I'm saying is I, I put that vengeance in God's hands, not in mine. And the hatred, I, I leave it alone through prayer and, and, and meditation and thought. And I move on to actually praying that God would bless them in the good way and bring resolution. Now, all of this does not mean that I'd even have to walk on the same side of the street as them. I might see them coming and cross the street. 
they might be the dangerous person who hurt me or hurt my family and I would never I wouldn't trust them again to, to, to walk the dog down the street because they have proven themselves untrustworthy and dangerous to me I'll never lend them money again <laughs> if, if they're stiffing me for money won't trust them that that's okay that's not to be unforgiving that's to be wise that's to be smart but in terms of carrying an offense against somebody what our faith directs us to do is is to give it to God let it go and actually move on to giving up anger giving up hatred and even praying for their good now when I say that I want to repeat it again I don't mean that everything is forgotten you still have to relate to them you still have to go to their church you still have to do this you don't forgiveness is something that's done for you you take care of yourself but it does mean you do not carry that burden anymore uh, you admit full on what they did what what was wrong and then you also admit full on that you are a fami you are lifting away the burden and desire of vengeance and hate and hurt and uh, um, you are forgiving them of that it does not mean you're reconciled it takes two to reconcile it takes two to to uh, to do that and there might never be a reconciliation or there might be but uh, that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about forgiving doing something for you and as you forgive when you forgive your sins are certainly forgiven by your father now if you don't forgive what does that mean he won't forgive you that's a toughie isn't it I'm even gonna go a couple minutes longer just to talk about it what I believe it means, and of course there's lots of ideas on this, but what I believe it means is that God, although he will not carry anger toward you and he will not exact judgment on you and he will not excruciatingly scare you and tear your life apart because you're not a forgiving person, that's not God. And that's not what he's going to do because Jesus experienced not all that, but an infinite more than that for, for your sins and for my sins, even the ones that I grapple with for my whole life and maybe never get right. Well, they're all made right in Christ. But what does that mean? Your heavenly Father will not forgive you. I believe it means this. There will be a day. It's the judgment day of the Christian. And I don't mean the judgment day of all humanity, judged for their sins. Uh, a terrible day but what I mean is a day when you stand before Christ and you are assessed evaluated judged reviewed for what you've done with your life how you handled things while the master was away <laughs> how you treated other people and um, on that day you will give an accounting and it will be made right it won't be punished but you will look into the eyes and the face of the most forgiving and loving man you've ever seen one who died for your sins and you'll see nail marks on his hands you'll just see in that face and my friends uh, you're gonna forgive um, so I want to ask you this why live a life now where you don't forgive people and then risk standing before Jesus your master your friend and having to address that issue why not get it right now by praying to him even now about this issue of forgiveness you can pray it along with me here um, let's bow our heads and pray together about this issue so gracious father we understand we are to forgive and we understand that that doesn't mean we give a pass or anything like that it just means we're not gonna inflict commensurate pain we're gonna we're gonna give up hatred and anger Give us the strength to do that. For some of us, that means the strength to confront. And for some of us, that even means the strength to perhaps report. Give us the strength. And then, dear King, the grace to want the person who hurt us to experience repentance and the best of life, which means being right with you. Give us the grace to do that. 
you're patient, so you give us time for these things, but uh, start this process. How about by the end of the day? How about by the end of the week? <laughs> or just how about if uh, you bring it about that I truly forgive and experience a deeper forgiveness of those who have hurt me? And how about if you do that for all of us? It'll take time. We know that. If it takes years, that's okay. When we stand before you, we want to be standing before you having jumped into a wonderful process of learning forgiveness that we would experience that lifting of sin and that forgiveness in our lives and we ask these things in the name of our dear king jesus in his name amen i want to thank you for meeting with me uh, for these last few weeks i guess or months i guess it's been um and I want to make a small announcement to you. I'll be saying more about this, but on the 6th of May at Grace Church downtown, we're going to open the building up. Uh, that means it's going to be doors open and masks available. And uh, I want to request that everybody wear a mask. That's uh, because uh, we're not out of this COVID thing yet. I'm not inviting everybody back for a church service, but we're going to have a day of prayer. We're partnering with several other ministries and pastors and um, we'll, our first, we'll have three sessions at 6.30, at noon, and at 5. And uh, Pastor Tim and I will be leading a session in the early morning, 6.30, at noon. I think I'm going to do that again, unless, in case I, unless I can find somebody to do it with me. And then a um, little squirrel drama up here. But, and then at five, uh, Pastor Avery Stafford from uh, out in Beaverton, he, he will be in and leading a, uh, a service of prayer for us. Ben and Heidi will be there in the evening. And throughout the day, the church will remain open and we will have other speakers. John Branner is going to be speaking on missions. Pastor Bruce Arnold is going to be speaking about uh, homelessness and life on the streets in Portland. Uh, Chaplain uh, Steve Chadwick from Portland Police is going to be there in the evening evening speaking to Pastor Steve from uh, uh, Shoals uh, Christian Community, I think it is. But So throughout the day we'll be there and we're going to be there to pray with anybody at any time when they come in and would like prayer. We'll also be serving the Lord's Supper throughout the day. So you can come on your lunchtime or in the morning or in the afternoon. You can stay for five minutes. You can stay for five hours. And there's also going to be uh, plenty of room for quiet meditation and prayer. And I'll be saying more about it but if you can, uh, I'd love to have you join us on the 6th. It will be about prayer. It won't be entitled prayer and then doing all other kinds of stuff. We're going to be praying. John uh, Roselle with crew is going to be leading some prayer walks around the community. Uh, it's going to be a great day, and it's going to be all about prayer. So um, put that on your calendars. And thanks again for joining in our studies of prayer.